Hey, how's it? Aloha. Well, okay, Meshuga, bleed. Now, I know some people are probably gonna go, oh my gosh, everybody does that reaction, because I saw that in the comments, because the first Meshuga song that I reacted to um, wasn't bleed, obviously. And uh, But I've been going back and forth. There's uh, You Know Who You Are, really cool cat. And I promised I would do one uh, this week, and he sends me the link, and I went, oh, it's bleed, and I went, oh, it's a drum cam. All right, well, look, I did that with uh, Danny of Tool, so I'm going to do this with uh, Thomas, is it Hake? Please, you know how I am with pronouncing. You know, check me if you will, be gentle. Uh, so these are, this is the um, drum cam of Bleed from Meshuggah. Uh, like usual, I want to thank everybody who's been just dropping a little bit uh, for a cup of coffee if you see fit. Uh, my channel's not monetized, and so that's always kind of cool. It also helps me out with the stuff I do with the kids. And uh, AKG240 headsets, there'll be a link for this below. There'll be a link for Meshuggah Spotify below and CDs and so on and so forth because I always support the bands and the artists that I react to. So I've never heard of Bleed. And uh, this is the drum cam, and I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, all right. Ready? Are you fucking ready? Okay, um, sorry if anybody's freaking out because they stopped right there. I know it, it, I've never heard the songs. So I don't know where to stop, so I'm trying to gauge it by measures that I'm hearing. Um, okay, you know, I have always been in awe of musicians that can handle this kind of uh, rhythmic arrangements that are kicking those 30 seconds out there. Now, remember, for those of you who don't know anything about music, uh, I try to do kind of a mellow nuance uh, reaction when I'm giving you some some things to possibly listen to so you can enjoy this um, maybe hear something a little different so those in this tempo those are 30 seconds those are very very fast notes in a measure and it's one thing to do that you know in sections of the song maybe run 16 bars maybe even you know 24 36 bars. these guys are hammering this all the way across the board I'm only a minute 50 into a seven minute track and I I'm already sorry <laughs> excuse me I'm not getting sweaty but I, I'm already I feel uh, not it's not anxiety but the the energy even right through a video I'm feeling this this energetic um, this powerful drive now here's something else I want to bring up um, uh, because I don't see the musicians in the front but I do recall it's two guitars bass and vocals um, these guys have to be tighter than a funeral drum when it comes to what's going on here because yes the drums are a very hard velocity hitting instrument especially when played in this context you know in a metal track like this uh, obviously in jazz and brushes it could be soft it could be chill it could be whatever 
But the guys who were holding down those 30 seconds all in unison, so what unison means is that uh, the guitar and the bass are hitting the same notes at the same time in, in most of the sections. I'm hearing the bass doing a couple of little runarounds uh, as he's circling, you know, uh, measures and stuff. Sometimes I'll hear him run off and, and, you know, do his own, you know, super sick fill to get back into the beginning of the measure. Now those guys, if they're off just slightly, especially at this machine gun speed, it would sound like just a pile of muddy crap, you know? And these guys are just rat, 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 and it's just absolutely incredible. Now, as far as the drumming is concerned, um, since I've never, I played drums when I was younger, but I never ventured into the really super fast, except for when I would try to do that little, you know, when the, uh, John Bonham in some of the songs that he did, I think Achilles Lat, no, or I forget which song it is, but he does that. Da -da -da. That's as close as I got to doing anything really super fast. These guys are insane. But I noticed that, I've noticed when I've watched guys that actually do this kind of work, drummers, that they they don't wear shoes most of the time. It's, you know, they, they're like got their socks and stuff. And I can only imagine it's a spring setting or something like that, or it's easy to kick off, you know, and heels up, you know, for the whole thing. And heels up for the whole thing, too. That's crazy. Um, let's just keep going. Jeez, I'm only two minutes in it. I'm like, ha. Huh? standing out to me right now number one the tone of the bass is so important and and since I have very limited experience I've never engineered anything like this uh, with this you know style of music and um, you know the heavy repetitive constant you know pew pew wall of sound if you guys know what pew pew is it's just it just feels like somebody just dumping clips um, I, I, I don't know, maybe you guys know, if there's an isolation of Thomas playing this in drums. Here's why I'm saying this. You guys may have heard me talk about rock bands with orchestras in the back, and they do sound beautiful and stuff, but a lot of times when you got that orchestra in the back, you lose a lot of the instrumental nuances or the compositional nuances that the composer writes in there. The little things, it's the little things, because there's such a wall of sound, because it is about the band, and the orchestra is... Um, you know, a, a, just a really wonderful addition. Now, how, wh why do I say that to this? I'm watching Thomas play, and I cannot hear something that I thought, man, if I could just hear that, the ghost notes. Watch how he's playing. For those of you who are not musicians, okay, so this is what I'm bringing from what I'm seeing, but I can't hear, so this is what's cool about a drum cam video. 
he's um you know you know his kicks are sorry old guy fail um watch his left hand he's not just going he is over that snare and there's a couple ghost notes in there and the ghost notes are nuances that man really make a difference um, if you can hear it so uh, i don't know if um, the audio only from the cd maybe you can hear it um but man am i am, am i do i wish i could hear that you know this this isn't this live audio engineering is absolutely sick these guys did an absolutely killer job uh, with live audio uh, and also listen up you know even though i'm focusing on the music and stuff you know the singer to me uh, being i don't have lyrics and i don't really listen to words um his performance all the growling his performance it's rhythmical cadencing the rhythm the rhythmical cadence of what he is performing and weaving that through that intense you know he's actually the guy that you hang on to as well as a definitive lock on the tempo and the way he's performing that because these guys are going off seven ways a Sunday holding down uh, that rhythmic pattern and you know when he's in there and you can also see too you know at least from this angle the audience is you know he is the leader of the band even though the band is giant behind him and that's something to lock on is that cadence and the way he's just nailing his rhythmical um, uh, performance of this track so <laughs> only halfway through so let's go back and see what else I'm in for That was bitchin'. <laughs> okay, I just showed my age. I said bitchin'. You know, what are we talking? 1960-something or really. Um, okay, at first I had to listen when it went really quiet. I could see Thomas was like, the oh, fuck, give me a, give me a break. <laughs> Maybe not. He's probably so, uh, his endurance is probably insane. He was just probably like, yeah. Go. Um, when it went into those... Uh, eighth notes, I think it was eighth notes or quarter notes that I heard being played when everybody was out. And I was going, okay, well, they don't have a synth player, so that's not it. And because I'm not watching it from the front, and then I noticed from looking out at the video that the guitar player was, you know, had lights on him. So then I listened a little closer and I could see what he did. And he had, you know, he cleaned up his sound and put a, um, a long reverb on it. 
<clears throat> had a little compression to extend that note, or just great pickups too. And he was holding that, and he got us into this very chill, kind of, you know, in this passage, you know, through the song, got us into this mood. And then when they went right back into the people's elbow, uh, he kind of, I was expecting this, you kind of saw me kind of jerk a little bit because I was going, and it's going to come, and it came in like a beat and a half before what I thought would have been that downbeat. Um, for those of you who know, don't know what that means, that is that kind of visceral feeling that you think um, a kick drum or something is going to come down at a certain point. And musicians feel that. We call that, you know, the one. And I thought, here it comes. And, oh, and it hit us. And then they get, first of all, they lock into, when I'm doing this, I can count off time and I can count off, uh, you know, try it, I'm meters, but I hate getting it wrong on the first list. And I have to go back and forth like the other guys do when they do their longer reactions or big breakdowns and stuff where they stop and they go back. And uh, But the uh, rhythmical arrangements, the clusters in which the guitar are um, uh, rhythmically playing what they're doing with what Thomas is doing to set up for that solo, which I love the fact that the solo was just long wailing notes. You know, it didn't, that a, a little later towards the end of the solo, then you saw some flame throwing going on and stuff and he really turned on uh, the speed. But the, the cool thing is that, is that even when he got up into the speed, it wasn't so far out there speed wise that it overtook the rhythm of the song. You know, uh, another example would be if they were playing slower, you know, at half that, and then he goes, and then all of a sudden he's the guy that's got the power. He just ends up, when he starts doing that run and stuff, he ends up matching the rhythmic arrangement, the rhythmical arrangement of uh, the rest of the guys on this. Um, but that was just sick, how that just kind of, boom, stopped fully, you know, it was a full-on hip check. It was just like, clear the palate. You know, the band is saying, let's just reset here. And mother, you know, and then they just came right back at it. All right, we're almost done here. Let's see what we got left. That was just crazy, and it looked like uh, Thomas was, you know, closing his ni eyes, not not closing his eyes to perhaps, you know, I can do it, I can do it, you know, I know I can get through this, as much as it was just focusing, because remember, he's the meter, he's also the meter, there's no click track going on, he is the living, breathing, percussive click track on this, you know, and staying locked in on that is just, it's, it's an art form in and of itself, all you drummers know that. Um, Something else that I wanted to mention really quick that I didn't say at the beginning, and I'm so sorry, uh, because I was just so enamored and just so just kind of caved in by the percussive nature of and the arrangements of it. The guitar compositions, the guitar arrangements, um, because I'm, I'm not watching the guitar players, but I love the fact, I, I don't know if they're actually bending the strings into... Uh, it sounded like it sounded like they were bending uh, bending into the notes that they wanted to and I, and because I couldn't see them 
you know, I couldn't see them if they were going up chromatically or if they what they were doing. But I love that sound. And if they were bending to get those chord changes happening, that's another milestone of precision and musicianship and skill set there. Uh, even if they weren't, look, this thing was just a total um, example of uh, uh, endurance. Uh, endurance with power and then songwriting, you know. And once again, I go back to the lead singer and, uh, you know, while the rest of the, the band is, is going, you know, at full clip, um, he's holding out these dark, long, heavy notes that in of itself has its own uh, orbit, if you would. Uh, that blends in, obviously, it's a song, but it just, it just sewed up perfectly. I don't know, I'm done, man. I'm done. I gotta go to bed, it's late, but I had to do this because, uh, well, I told my, I, I promised I would do it, but um, I was just really interested in it, and it's just uh, mental. Anyhow, thank you guys so much. If you guys decide to buy me a cup of coffee, links below. Uh, AKG240 headsets, link below. Music and stuff, link below. Even the cool hat. I had a lot of people go, dude, that's a cool little cabbie beanie. Link below. Anyhow, you guys take care. And uh, by the time I post this, most of you will be in bed. Uh, but if you're pinning, all right. <laughs>